I'm very sorry about the flicker if it even shows up on the final video but we're going to install a two-speed pulley otherwise known as the high low on grumpy so it is yet another grumpy video I hope you guys aren't getting tired of them so I'll show you all the components how it goes on where to lubricate what to lubricate and how to operate so hang on right, step one should be obvious go ahead and take that wheel off it's going to make your life a lot easier step two to press your clutch lock your clutch and brake down so that you can easily remove the belt you only need to remove it from that six inch pulley you have to get that spring off guys connected and in a position where you can see exactly what's going on here that ought to do it okay it is a 5 30 seconds as most are and it is behind the pulley so you oh i'm sorry it's in front it's in front of the pulley so this is one a new one with loctite on it that i installed sorry about bumping you guys keep bumping you it's only because you're in my way then remove your pulley just slide it off now it's worth noting that um <clears throat> early models uh you can mount the high lows on the early models meaning the 64s but your drive shaft is longer. It's about an inch longer. You will have to trim that off. I had to do that on Ugly Alice. But what that extension is for is over here at the bevel gearbox pulley, right there, okay? If you happen to have one of these older tractors that has two pulley grooves on it, it's because they made a right hand, um, leaf back that mounted here and that extension was just part of it okay but uh now that you got that pulley off make sure that your shaft is good and clean next we need to take these two bolts out because we have to replace them with longer ones much longer ones you see right here quite a bit longer okay so let's get those off those are half inch if you don't have a spring tool screwdriver will work just as well might just be a little more aggravating to get it off all right half inch got you right here nothing's going to fall apart when you do that taking the two bolts out of the top of the gear case the transmission and then you are going to need your bracket I'll show you the bracket here here is your cradle and this cradle is ugly and rusty so real quick before we stick this on i'm going to show you where to lubricate this so that it will operate for you and it's something that should be done in the preventative maintenance as well and that is these pins are held in by the actual high low itself by that groove right there they just nest right in there like that so you want to pile the grease in to those there's two of them one on either side and you also want to grease the shafts. So I'm gonna take these over to the wire wheel, clean them up a little bit, and use some white lithium grease, grease them up. You want to oil your two pivots, and you don't need to worry about oiling that. That bracket actually goes right there where the shift tower, shift quadrant bolts onto. So you'll need a slightly longer bolt in order to mount that. Let me get this stuff cleaned up, get some lithium grease on it, and we'll commence to the installation. Alright, we got the two pivots cleaned up. 
And one of them's wore pretty good. I'm gonna turn it over so that it wears on the other side and let it ride for a while. But this is what they look like when they're new. As you can see. And they have nothing in the cup. That's because that was a separate part number. What goes in the cup is a polymer that uh, you can see is in here. You can see how this one's eat up pretty good. This is the one that um, I'm gonna just turn it around so that it'll ride on the other side. See how much life we can get out of that. But that's what it should look like. This one's in real good shape. Um, and it has the uh, plug in it. It's a really hard rubber. So you can use nylon, piece of nylon rod, piece of Delrin rod, whatever you wanna use to shove down in there and then just cut your groove in it so that it'll comfortably slip over the lip of the high low unit itself just like so just slip right over the right over it just like that okay because that's where they ride and these actually stay stationary um, these are what actually moves the uh, unit in and out of low gear so when I first start this up it's going to make a heck of a mess unless I clean that groove out isn't it so at any rate let us get our bolts we will get our plate there's the other plate there it is okay uh, this is a consumable part mainly because a lot of people that um, operate the high low don't know that you have to stop the high-low. You depress your clutch, make sure that nothing is rotating back here, and then you can engage and disengage in order to get it into high or into low. So getting it into low, you're actually going in against these dogs that are mounted right here. And if you'll notice, there's thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, and that's on purpose. Uh, that just helps you get it into position. And another nice thing about the way that these are designed is they're designed to both go either in between like that or to cradle just like that. Either way, it will work either way. So, um, for people that are not real familiar with these, your best bet is to shut the tractor off to switch it from high gear to low gear. From low to high is simple because you're disengaging this. You're moving this or you're moving this plate down. So, woo, get back up there. When you're in low gear, you're going to be cradling either one of those or you're going to be in between like that. When you put it back into high gear, this piece moves in towards the tractor, which just gives you your gap. So what ends up happening is people get a little anxious and they go ahead and slam it in. And this is the original one. And this side looks awesome. Let's flip it over. Yup. So it's been whacked quite a few times where it's just been slammed into uh, low gear. Um, I'm just going to flip it over and use this other side. I'm always real careful when I uh, engage and disengage. So, and then we get down to our bolts. So that you guys know, these are five and one half inch bolts. Here's our scale. You can see five and a half inch bolts right there. Lock washers are important to keep them from backing out. So, <clears throat> um, to make it a little easier on yourself, before you put that upper bracket on, go ahead and mount your high-low unit. Your high-low unit has a key in it already. And then it has this collar, and this collar does come off. And you have two set screws. One, two. You see I've got new um, set screws in there. You just line that slot up, which has the key in it. Line it up with that. 
and then just slide it on. But don't tighten those down yet. The reason you don't tighten those down yet is quite simply because you have to get the pulley aligned. You have to get this spot aligned with your bale that moves it in and out of gear. So like when I go into low, that pulls out just like that. And then when you go into high, it goes like that, okay? And you may have noticed a grease zerk here. Uh, they come from the factory with just a plug and then they come with the grease zerk uh, separate. I always just leave the grease zerk on just like this one was, just leave the grease zerk on. So right now we are engaged with the transmission and we're ready to proceed with the installation. Let me show you that. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Biggie Rat stopped by for just a little bit. Those sweetheart of people brought me lunch. So I sat there and chatted with them for a while and had me a bite to eat. So you get to this point and I've got these guys greased. I'm gonna slide the bale down so that both of them are captured and then I gotta get this bracket moved forward there we go and then take your five and a half inch bolt and you put the lock washer on the back side of the bolt right there just slide those both in get them started there we go I'm just gonna run them in with the uh, impact and run them all the way in I have a little bit left over here. Let me see here. Let me check the operation. That would be high gear. Low gear. That's pulling it out way too far, but uh, we haven't adjusted everything yet. And I should have put the belt on first. So we get to take it back off. <laughs> Gotta love being me. And that's why we left our uh, brake pedal locked, was so that we could fish the uh, belt around everything easily. Just goes right on around. And you guys might also notice Get this up over the idler pole. Get up there. Come on. There you go. That we have a new stop on here. That's because it was missing one. I didn't notice that first time around. But now we're in a position with the belt on. Go ahead and release your parking brake. Let me set this bale back down. Release the parking brake, loud flying, or not, <laughs> there it goes. You want to release your parking brake so that your spring isn't as tensioned, and also so that you can get your line of sight and line your belt up, and we need to go in just a hair more, and now we need to find our, um, set screws I'm trying to see around you guys I'm trying to see around you guys okay there's one 
and you're going to need a t-handle for it there's really no other way around it the set screws are set at an angle so you can get the t-handle in there nice and easy peasy and give her a nice good good and tight make it good and tight don't forget you've got two of them so you need to rotate it some more and get to the second one and i just put them between 11 and 12 o'clock just makes it easy to get the uh, T-handle Allen rent there. That's the keyway spot. Oops. Yeah, I seriously doubt that that tiny little drop hurt that light. <laughs> okay. There we go. And you guys might notice there's an awful lot of grease on this side of the uh, transmission. Let me show you why. I just noticed this. At one time, this already had a high-low on it. The high-low was removed and replaced with a six-inch pulley. Well, now we're going back to a high-low. It's the way it wants to be. All right? All right. Now we can come back in. And I'm not sure why we're having... Uh, well, oh, I know why we're having length issues. I know exactly why. We forgot the all-important shoe... Okay, this shoe goes, oh, let me get the bolts in, and I'll show you, there, that shoe goes right there, okay, and good night, phone's going nuts, um, that's why my bolts weren't seating all the way, because I didn't have that in, so that's pretty, good night, what in the world? That was nuts. Um, now you're ready to slide those two. Let's take two. Slide those two down. Get your bolts in. Get them started. Now we can run them home. I'm going to introduce you guys to a new ratchet. Yep, yep, yep. I broke down, and believe it or not, in all, all the years, and all the snap-ons that I've got, and all of the, just all of the, all of the ratchets that I have, the most I had ever spent on a ratchet was $60. And that was for that big half-inch brand-new snap-on um ratchet and that was from a pawn shop this teeny tiny little thing made by Weira or Vera has different locking positions and you can even come back a little bit but and then easy directional change five degrees of rotation and a nice comfort grip, grip handle so new wrench 66 dollars and some change i'm just going to make sure those are good and tight and they are so now basically it's installed it works like it should but we have one more thing to do and that is over here the bracket you can see this little rust spot here where it had one and that is a 7 16 so we'll buzz that out and give me just a second because I have to get a longer 7 16 to replace it with hang on okay got a longer one with a lock washer and it just goes right there where that shift quadrant bracket is. And it's got the capture nut behind it. So just make sure you get started. And send it home carefully. You don't want to spin that capture nut. I don't think I got it. 
fact, I know I didn't get it. Let's try it again. Didn't get it squarely in the capture nut. That other bolt just came right out. Why are we having trouble with this one? Do we need to pry this up a little bit? No? We need to go down with it a little bit? Perhaps. Yep. Ah. Well, I may have boogered up the threads. Let me get a look inside the hole here. Hmm. Threads in the capture nut look fine. Let me get another bolt. I'll just leave it running. Hang on. Oh. Okay. Let's try again. Take two. Get in there and that's better. Let's just run that in with the uh, with the new ratchet. Yeah, that's working just fine. And the bracket will find its own angle. Just let it let it go where it wants to go. Get it secure. And we'll come back over here and we'll check operation. That is high gear. That is low gear. High gear, low gear. And it did not lock down on the shaft. <laughs> okay. It's just moving on the shaft. I don't have those... Uh, Allen keys set tight enough. This is just an effort and futility, isn't it? Oh, come on. I want to see what's going on in there. There we go. Really? Oh, this is one of those days when I just should not have come out into the shop. Right? Right. Let me get you up a little higher. Why are you still sliding? You should not be sliding anymore. investigate okay <laughs> intermission the pulley was moving back and forth because I didn't have the collar the lock collar clocked in the right position so it was grabbing the bushing instead of grabbing the hole that goes down to the keyway so now it is so right now we are in low gear you can tell by that capture nut or that stop being in the groove of the plate and that is out that is high gear high gear low gear high low now I'm gonna grease it up stick the wheel back on and we'll take it outside and we'll show you the difference between high gear and low gear as far as uh, how fast and how slow she rolls in first gear. So hang on. Okay, we got her out here. Let's uh, 
starter up and we'll just go in first gear and high and then I'll shut it off show you how to put it in low and then we'll take off in low at idle as well you guys will see just how big a difference there is I suggest you guys go ahead and shut it down too. Uh, it just makes it so much easier. And I've got to play. Ouch! <laughs> Get back up there and stay up there. Hang on, guys. I've got to move the uh, pulley a little bit. Okay. I think I've got it now to where you guys can see it. Now you see I've got the new foot in between the forks. Then you just take the lever and push it in. And when you push it in like that, that locks it into low gear. Now we'll start her back up. And I'll show you what low gear is like. Low first. So there's quite a difference. Uh, it reduces your speed by one third. Um, and you would use a high low in heavy load conditions. Like grading, if you were grading a driveway, or if you were tilling, you definitely want to use low gear. And the reason that you want to do that is because you don't want to bust your axle tube like the 2210's axle tube is busted. They break because you put too much of a load on them. So like if I ran this up into a tree in third gear at um, low idle and just let it sit there and try to dig itself to China, it would eventually snap that axle tube because it's trying to put too much torque through that tube. Um, that's about the best way that I can explain it. So. This is almost caught up with uh, Ugly Alice. The only thing Ugly Alice has on it that this does not is the um, rear PTO, which it will be going over to this. And if we come over to the other B12, this is what the high low came off of. Oh, get the seat pan up. And take a look over here there are remnants of a rear PTO this is the bracket that goes around the belt and keeps the belt on and this big C bracket right here is also part of the uh, rear PTO setup so at one time this did have a rear PTO uh, this engine does turn over so we'll be getting into this one at some point in time but for right now it has donated the high low i've already replaced the pulley with the uh, new pulley six inch and they use the same belt and no that side cover is not missing it's right there but i think this one will be uh a i don't know might be easy to bring back might be difficult to bring back but in either case we're going to do what we can to bring it back right these b12s they've got a bit of a cult following so that's going to wrap it up there's your high low install and of course i'm going to leave my flub in there my flub being not having the collar set right to lock the pulley down but we've got her squared away and again your best bet if if you're not real confident with a high low at your first few times using it just shut the tractor off um, that will keep you from damaging the fork all 
All right. You guys know the rest, but I'll say it anyway. I'll see you when I see you. Later. I'm out of here.